Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caroline, I am a lecturer in physics here in the UK, post every Monday and Thursday. So if you're a lecturer, you want to be an academic, you're studying for your PhD, you're thinking about going to university, or you're just curious about what we get up to when we're at university, um, hopefully this is the channel for you. Uh, I used to work in industry, so I've got a background there, um, and now of course I'm an academic scientist. Um, thank you so much for all the lovely comments and suggestions about things we can have in these videos. Um, I've taken them all on board. You will see over the next couple of weeks, we will be having some of those topics in the comments come up. So please do stay tuned. Uh, but today I wanted to share a little project we were working on at the university for the last ooh, six weeks um, because it's just gone live on YouTube. So as an academic lecturer, um, Obviously, I spend a lot of my time working in the university, working on in the lab, um, kind of hidden away in offices. And I think it's really important to communicate what I'm up to and to share what we do when we're hiding in our laboratories. And of course, I go off to the meetings. So I go to conferences and meetings and I, I get to network and share my ideas. But I quite like sharing science and I guess a variety of different arenas and environments. So I do after dinner talks, which are great fun. Um, I'll do kind of evening lectures for people. I go off and I work at festivals, um, which I also really enjoy just giving public free lectures there. And over the last few years, I have dabbled in stand-up scientific comedy, which is not something I thought or ever planned to do. Um, often I will crack a joke in my lecture or I will say something to get a smile or to get the students to like laugh a little bit um, but I wouldn't say that you know I'm a natural comedian on the stage but the opportunity came up to try stand-up comedy and I thought well why not you know it's, it's something new it's good to push and challenge yourself and it was such a friendly environment so my university take part in something called Bright Club and basically it's a platform for researchers and, and people working at, at a university to get up on a stage just for a few minutes uh, in a really friendly like pub environment or somewhere relaxed and just chat about their research and try to get a few laughs. Now, admittedly, the first time I did this, because I was new to it, I took it quite, quite seriously, I guess. Um, and there's a few comedy books you can buy and, I, and I, I've got them and I thought, okay, I should read about how you're meant to be funny. And I remember I was on a, on a plane ride coming home from a conference and it was a long haul flight. And I thought, this is perfect. I can write my comedy material on this plane. Um, and I had a G&T and I started writing my comedy material and I thought it was going to be hilarious. And then I landed and the next day I reread what I'd written and I was like, no, that's not going to be nearly enough comedy fun for this particular event. And it was such a good challenge to try to take my area of physics and think about the funny bits, you know, the funny moments, the funny things, the funny words, the funny terms. And we got up on the stage and the weirdest thing was doing the practice run. So before we were allowed on the stage in the evening to actually do our live comedy stand up set, we had to have a run through in the afternoon. And that was so, so painful. Um, everybody was lovely. Everybody was really nice. But going to a very well lit room in the middle of an afternoon with only six people in the audience and holding a microphone and trying to be funny to those six people is a really tough gig, especially if you're not a comedian, if you're a scientist taken out of your laboratory trying to make your research be funny. Um, but we got through it. Uh, I had a few ideas and suggestions from the people who were kind of watching me, which was brilliant ideas on how to make it better, make it funnier. And then, of course, you go and do the evening performance. And I think I was a little way down the running order. Um, so I had to wait until the first act was over, then the interval. And then I think I was the opening person on the second act, maybe. Um, but in any case, you're standing around, you're waiting and the people before you go up and do their turn, their set. And they're funny, you know, they get laughs. And these are people that I work with at the university. They're my fellow researchers. They're in different disciplines to myself, but you know, they all get up, they all do their material and people are laughing. And on the one hand, this is brilliant because you think, oh my goodness, it's a lovely audience. You know, this is going to go really well. And on the other hand, you're waiting for your turn thinking, what if they don't laugh at me? You know, what if I go up and my jokes are not 
funny. But I walked up onto the stage and, you know, being a lecturer, public speaking is fine. You know, I don't mind talking in front of large crowds, but this is a very different situation where I'm trying to make the crowd actually laugh at what I'm saying. And I did the first little bit of my material and I got to the first kind of joke and I said the line and I waited, hoping that they were going to laugh and they laughed. And that was the most overwhelming feeling of euphoria, delight, satisfaction. I'd actually made a group of people laugh. Now, whether they were laughing at me or with me, I didn't really care. The fact was the audience was laughing. I was saying my material. They continued to laugh throughout the set. Um, I got down, it was a little bit of a blur after it was all finished. And it was strangely addictive to want to do it again. It's one of those things that beforehand, there's the whole build up of, is this going to be funny? Is it going to be a good thing? Um, I had my friends in the audience, my poor PhD students had come along to support me. Uh, and then afterwards, the relief of people saying, yeah, that wasn't too bad. Yes, you were quite funny. We enjoyed that. Um, it's just really good. It was really good. And because it was really good, I decided to give it another go. And then I gave it another go. So I've actually done stand-up comedy now three separate occasions. Um, and the last occasion I did was probably my biggest stand-up comedy event so far because it was part of an event at Guildford Fringe. So the Fringe Festival, obviously the main one's up in Edinburgh and it's a huge comedy arena for up-and-coming new comedian and talent and people who are very well-established comedians. And it started to spread throughout the UK and we had a local event happening in Guildford. And I thought it would be good fun to take part in the Guildford Fringe. So again, through the university and alongside some other brilliant researchers at the university, we put on a comedy show. Uh, it was a little bit different because it was actually uh, recorded at a radio station. So the audience came into the radio station. Uh, we had special permission to be able to have drinks in there for the audience. And I believe the radio station may have recorded it, although I do hope they lost the tape because at one point I think I did attempt to do a comedy rap, which I'm not entirely sure is something I would ever attempt to do again. But anyway, so I've tried comedy. I've tried comedy three times and I really enjoyed it. And I think the thing I like about it is it's taking my science into a completely different environment. You know, it's a completely different area. I'm sharing it with people that may not necessarily have a, a massive interest in the science that I'm working in. Um, but it's just it's just fun. And I thought it would be really lovely to do something this year again for the Fringe Festival. But rather than doing solo stand up comedy, this time I thought I would try to get some of my colleagues involved and do more of a panel type quiz show thing. And we started planning ideas and what we could do. And then, of course, this horrible, horrible global pandemic hit. Um, it meant that we just couldn't plan to have anything anymore in any kind of public venue. We, we need people to keep apart. We need to all follow social distancing. Um, we just need to do everything we can to slow the spread of this horrible, horrible virus. But my university suggested that we take the idea into an online format. So we moved this show idea from being like a physical show, which you would come and see, and we would record it virtually in our own different locations and then make it available via YouTube. And it was, you know, so much fun to record. I am very lucky at my university to have some fabulous colleagues who were happy to take part. So we had a team for physics taking on a team from health. Um, and there were a few rounds and it was all a matter of trying to hide lies and smuggle through truths. Um, so, you know, we had a mystery object or one of us tried to give a reason why we had the object. The other team had to guess if it was a truth or a lie. We had a mystery person round where we all claimed to know somebody and the other team had to work out which one of us actually knew the person. And we had a round where one of us wrote a short piece um, based loosely around a research interest. And most of it was lies with five truths hidden in it. And the other team had to try to spot the truths. And honestly, it was so much fun to record. Um, yes, we didn't have a live audience. So, you know, we didn't have any kind of feedback from the audience, whether they were going to enjoy it or not. But we had good fun. You know, we laughed as we recorded it. Um, we giggled. Uh, we had lots of debates on the pointing and the scoring and who was winning. But anyway, last week, my university made that video publicly available. Um, so if you fancy watching something a little bit different, you want to watch a bunch of academics. So there's four professors and two doctors. Um, trying to win above the other team and trying to hide some lies and smuggle through some truths, 
I will include a link to it now. It's quite a long video, so it's just over 40 minutes, so it's definitely one to watch with a cup of tea. Um, but if you do watch it, I hope you enjoy it. This Thursday, I thought I would do a video all about money. So how I get paid, how we get paid for our research, um, how students will get finance for their research. And then the following week, that will slide nicely into a discussion all about research grant writing. And then coming up later in the month, we'll have a big discussion about CV writing and in particular the difference between industry and academia. And then there'll be some vlogs and bits and pieces around those videos. And before you know it, we'll be into August and then it's exam results season here in the UK. So I'll do a little bit of chatting about that in my role as admissions tutor. And of course, then we'll be going into September and starting to gear up for teaching. And so I'll keep you updated on what's happening and what we're doing as lecturers to get ready for our new teaching semester. Um, but I hope that video was interesting. Um, yeah, do if you do check out the video of us doing the comedy night, let me know what you think. It's just a bit of fun, um, but hopefully it might make uh, you smile or giggle a little bit. But have a good few days and I will see you on Thursday for the next video. Thank you very much. Oh, and if you like this one, I always forget this, but if you like this video, do hit subscribe, hit the like button. It, it's really useful, it really helps. So thank you very much and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.